the Panasonic GX80 or GX85 in the USA appeared out of the blue for most Micro Four Thirds users. Its predecessor, the GX7, has been one of the company's most popular models, but its apparent update, the GX8, was a disappointment for many photographers. While a superb camera in its own right, with a new 20 megapixel sensor and state-of-the-art electronic viewfinder, it didn't inherit much from the GX7 except in-body stabilisation. Mainly though, it was much bigger and much more expensive. A GX7 Mark II it was not. And then along came the GX7 Mark II, at least that's what it's called in Japan. In America it's the GX85 and in Europe the GX80. This strange naming policy has a simple explanation. To save money, Panasonic have fired their camera marketing people and replaced them with a random camera name generator. I'm looking forward to reviewing the Panasonic GXX M584% dollar next. You thought it was going to be the GH5, didn't you? In size, the GX80 is classic micro four thirds, small enough to carry everywhere, big enough to handle well. Its weight is surprising. Although it is made mainly of plastic, it is almost the same weight as Olympus's Pen F and feels similarly robust, if not quite as classy. By comparison with the GX8, the GX80, to my hands, feels more solid and just as heavy. Actually, the GX8 is 60 grams or 2 ounces heavier and made in magnesium alloy, so it just shows how subjective these things are and why it is best to handle a camera before buying. The GX80 has lost the GX7's swiveling EVF, not too serious in my view and retains the tilting monitor, which many prefer to a fully articulated one. The EVF itself is bright and vividly coloured, and while giving a fairly large image view, for video, or at 3 to 2 DSLR ratio, it is a bit smaller than I'd like when cropped down for 4 to 3 native micro four thirds format. Nevertheless, it's big enough for detailed viewing, and manual focusing is easy with it. One caution, which also applied to the GX7, is that some people see an unpleasant shearing effect when the camera is panned from side to side. I don't see it at all, but some do, and it is worth checking it out. The GX80 retains a built-in flash, too. I like that because on a social occasion, it's so useful to put the camera on eye auto and open the flash for a bit of social photography without having to engage the brain. I mean that. Mobile phone ease of use with proper photography quality. The real interest in the GX80 is that it has a new shutter designed to minimise shutter shock, 5-axis in-body stabilisation, and the moiré filter has been removed from the sensor, which should lead to sharper images. There's a new, truly satisfying mono L photo style. If I'm going to shoot black and white, I don't want a colour shot with the colour removed. I want a hard, gutsy, contrasty image with character. That's mono L. It's Panasonic's answer to the Olympus Pen F's Mono Profile 3, almost infrared in character. Then there are all the 4K photo modes, with an interesting addition called Light Composition, which acts rather like Olympus's Composite mode. There's more. Video can now use the in-body stabilisation, and if the lens is stabilised too, add them together for dual image stabilisation. The image centre is 16 megapixels, rather than the GX8's 20 megapixels, but with the moiré filter removed, the detail captured by the GX80 looks just as good as the GX8. Usefully, you can now charge the battery in camera, though you cannot charge the battery and use the camera at the same time. I find it handy that I can charge the camera in my bag using a mobile phone portable charger. This is no incremental upgrade. Panasonic have been listening to users and made radical changes. In use, the camera feels workmanlike. It's good to have a built-in flash, and all the controls fall nicely to hand in the Panasonic style. The right hand grip is comfortable and the body cradles nicely. It feels distinctly minimalist and unadorned compared to the Pen F and GX8. And while I prefer the spacious ergonomics of the GX8, there has to be a trade-off for the smaller size. There's no dedicated exposure compensation control, but the rear control wheel doubles up for it with a press and is scarcely less convenient. More serious omissions for me are a dedicated focus mode button. The first thing I did was assign that to function 1. And there's just one custom setting on the mode dial. Custom settings are crucial to me on digital cameras because they are the only way that you can return to a known state instantly and certainly. There is an attempt to compensate in that when you set the mode dial to C, a new item appears at the head of the menus for quick selection of which of the three custom settings you want. The swiveling eyepiece of the EVF of the GX7 is missing. Better to have it than not, but it's no great loss really. 
There are a few new bracketing options, aperture, focus and white balance. Not exciting as far as I'm concerned, and the focus bracketing is a disappointment since it literally brackets. You already have post focus which focuses everywhere. Olympus got it right with their focus bracketing which simply focuses from near to far, allowing you to stack the results in Photoshop. Panasonic's would be useful if the GX80's focusing accuracy was uncertain, but it isn't. However, all in all, I find little to dislike in the GX80. It's familiar territory for Panasonic owners, including their now standard clear menu system. And the handy monitor info display, accessed via the disp button, equivalent to the Olympus Super Control Panel. So, how does it perform? The first thing I wanted to try was the stabilisation. With the old 300mm nickel I'm using here, I was able to get most shots sharp at an 80th of a second. That's about three stops better than unstabilised. Plus, you now get a good stable viewing image on a half press of the shutter, much like Olympus cameras. The sensor stabilisation of the GX80 is about a stop behind that of Olympus's latest cameras. But if you have a lens compatible with Panasonic's dual stabilisation, I'd say it is a little better. Statements like that will always have a personal element to them, because we all hold and fire cameras differently, and steadiness of hand differs enormously amongst individuals. I'd also add that effective stabilisation does not substitute for a steady grip and gentle touch on the shutter button. Any of my fellow news photographers would be able to hold a Nikon with 50mm lens still at one eighth of a second back in film days before stabilisation was even heard of. A stable camera hold and smooth shooting technique takes practice and can't be taken for granted any more than marksmanship with a match pistol can. Now, the shutter. Here's how it sounds. And for comparison, the Pen F. The new shutter is quiet and quite soft sounding quieter than the GX7 or GX8, rather pleasant. But that's not the point of it. Previous Panasonics have suffered from shutter shock, a blurring of the image caused by the impact of the shutter blades, occurring usually between 1 60th and 3 50th of a second, and enough to spoil an image. Olympus have it too, but for some time they've had a workaround partly using the electronic shutter, while Panasonic's answer was simply to use the electronic shutter. The electronic shutter has disadvantage of its own though, and workarounds are never truly satisfactory. Now, here is a radically new mechanical shutter using electromagnets in place of springs. Does it work? It sure does. Panasonic say that shutter shock has been cut to 10% of previous levels. I can see no difference between the electronic and mechanical shutter sharpness at 100%. Shutter shock is a thing of the past. The only penalty of the new shutter is a maximum speed of 1 4,000th and a highest flash sync speed of 1 160th. These are small prices to pay for the elimination of a systemic weakness and the electronic shutter will take you to 1 16,000th anyway. That's not all though. We have potentially better sharpness as well by the removal of the anti moiré filter, the low pass filter on the center. Does it make a difference? In my opinion, yes, a very worthwhile one. Here's a shot of my Olympus 12-40mm zoom, the sharpest lens in my bag. It has resolution enough to test the sensor's limits. It still looks good pulled up. Oh, by the way, that's not 100%, it's 200%, equivalent to viewing on a monitor around 7 feet or 2 meters across. Here's a more reasonable 100%. Focusing, whether single shot, continuous or tracking, is the same as the GX8 and the best that Micro Four Thirds has to offer. If you want to improve on it, you'll need to spend multiples of the cost of the GX80. And for single shot AF, there'd be no point in improvement since it works as fast as you can physically push the shutter button. There are some interesting software enhancements, monochrome L I've mentioned, and also light composition. This is an offshoot of 4K photo, which enables you to superimpose images on one another without overexposing existing components. In this illustration of it, I lit a chair and then wrote 1, 2, 3 on the wall with a torch. Light composition adds them together by only adding pixels which are brighter than in the previous frame. A rather mild electric storm was the only real world chance I had to work with it. 
but it gives an idea of the possibilities on something like a firework display, for example. I made extensive use of the camera on some house martins nesting across the street. These are on my Olympus 40-150mm f2.8 with the converter using 4K photo mode pre-burst at around 1 3,000th of a second and with the lens wide open at f4. These birds are fast and agile and I'd expect to have a worthwhile shot once every 50 shutter pushes. With pre-burst, it's pretty much every shutter push, though that is 60 frames at a time of course. But hey, no one else needs to know that, do they? For video, the GX80 is the usual Panasonic basic mix from 4K to VGA, but it lacks microphone and headphone sockets. It's no GH4 therefore, but like the GX8, this is primarily a stills camera. It's pretty good, helped by the availability of dual body stabilization in video as well as stills. This is one of the cameras where I know what I think without having to think. Always a welcome attribute for those of us with donuts for brains. The GX80 is a working camera, a serious tool with state-of-the-art features. I said of the GX7 that it was my Swiss army knife. The GX80 is that too, but with a new shutter, 5-way stabilisation and 4K stills and video, it has gained some new, sharper blades and tools and is much more than a GX7 Mark II. Its design philosophy is reflected in its box. Where the beautiful Pen Fs would suit a silk nightdress from Harrods, the Panasonics could just as well contain a pair of dungarees from Amazon Workwear. The GX80 is not particularly pretty, quite plain in fact, but its laying of the ghost of shutter shock and the 5-axis body stabilisation, plus lens dual stabilisation, makes it very attractive indeed. Add the eagerness of the state-of-the-art focusing performance, the compact dimensions and stunningly sharp micro four-thirds image quality and a notably reasonable price and you have a compelling camera, period, micro four-thirds or not. Thanks for watching.